What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I've been getting a lot of questions about the SPI exam as well as taking your ARDMS board exams. So I'm going to show you guys how to figure out if you're eligible to sit for the ARDMS board exams as well as the SPI exam. So you're going to go to ARDMS.org. You're going to go here to the Get Certified tab there's a lot of things on the ARDMS.org website that is going to be helpful for you you can log into your my art ARDMS you can apply now there's a lot of things you can do and here's so many different tabs we've got the discover tag get certified maintain your certifications volunteer and there's just a whole bunch of things here that you can click on to find all the information that you need and the one we're looking for first is the sonography principles and instrumentation. And you can see here that it's underneath every single different certification. And they all pretty much, as I've been looking at them, have the same exact PDF that you can download from the website. So I want you to see here that this has all the information for you. ARDMS SPI exam is the first step in earning your future ARDMS credentials and the exam tests like your physical principles and it also tests your instrumentation knowledge and in order to take any of your other specialty board exams you have to take the SPI exam and there's this five-year rule where you have to take the SPI exam within five years in order to earn your RDMS, RDCS, RVT, or RMSKS. So I clicked here so you guys can see, but you guys can basically look this up yourself and figure out what is required for you as far as when you can take your exams, how long it takes to take your exams, because you can always take these exams multiple times if you fail, but just remember that there is this five-year rule here. And these are the highlighted parts that I think is going to be important for you. You need to make sure that you have your SPI within five years and take your specialty board exam as well. Right here it says regardless of sequence. So if you guys have any questions at all about your board exams, ARDMS.org is the best place for you to look. And you can also always contact them if you have any questions. So we're looking at the SPI requisites and you can see here that there's all these tabs, overview requirements, apply, schedule, prepare, scoring, statistics, and they all are available for you to help you with any questions that you have. The statistics is pretty cool because you can see every year how many people passed and how many people were first time test takers. So this information is really helpful for you, especially when you're about to take your exams. Now you want to go to the rec requirements and you want to see here, and it says that the SPI exam is the first exam that you're going to apply for, especially for new grads or people in school. This is going to be important for you because SPI, like I said, is the very first requirement that you're going to need to take in order to sit for your specialty board exams. So if you click on this link here, it brings you this PDF that you can all download and you can keep for yourself so you can see what kind of prerequisite you are going to fall under. The SPI exam requirement shows that all you really need is successful completion of a general medical or sonographic physics class, seminar, or course. And this requirement is just for you to be able to see that you are able to take the SPI before you graduate. It says here that you can take the SPI prior to graduation, just depending on if you meet this requirement. So all this information is here for you. The documentation that you need and the transcript requirements, literally everything that you need is on this website. So I highly recommend you go to ARDMS.org to figure out what you need in order to sit for the SPI board exam. And that's all here for you. Regardless if your school is KHEP accredited or ARRT accredited, just know the main board exams for your 
registered diagnostic medical sonography is under ARDMS. So it's very important that you're going to go to this website and look up everything that you need. It says here that you don't need a clinical verification form for SP SPI. So that's really important to know. Now I'm just going to scroll down and show you that this has all the other exam prerequisites. This shows you that you can also apply to any of the ARDMS registries and how you can apply and what prerequisite you fall under. So it's important that you guys look at this because a lot of you guys have been asking me, hey, can I take my ARDMS board exam? When can I take the board exam? And it all just depends exactly on what your prerequisites are. And if you fall into a two-year allied health education program, if you fall into a KHEP program, if you already have a bachelor's degree, for example, this one right here on prerequisite 3A says if you have a bachelor's degree, any major or foreign degree equivalent to a bachelor's degree in the U.S. or Canada, all you need is 12 months of full-time clinical ultrasound or vascular experience. So on top of that, you're going to have to include all your documentation, so the copy of your bachelor's degree or a letter from a supervising physician and an ARDMS registered sonographer, technologist, or an educational program director with all these requirements. So there's just a bunch of different prerequisites that you guys could potentially fall under. And it's important for you guys to look up this information. I'm getting so many people asking me certain things and I wanted to make a video to show you that this has all your answers for you because each one of your situations is different from each other and this goes to show that if you go to KHEP, if you go towards a non-accredited school, you have to really talk to your advisors, talk to your clinical lab instructors or even people who went to that school prior to you. Ask them how they were able to sit for SPI, ask them what it took for them to take their board exams and their specialty board registries and that should be able to help you. Now there's so much on here on this website that will be able to answer any of the questions that you have and I'm happy to answer you know your guys' questions but this is just something that I feel like has been repeatedly asked and I think that you going to this ARDMS.org website will really help you figure out okay, what's the next step for me to take SPI? What's the next step for me to get my specialty board exams and become a registered diagnostic medical sonographer? And it's all right here for you. Now, I can't tell you if you should go to non-accredited school or an accredited school, and that is just something you have to do your research on and see if that school will allow you to sit for your SPI board exam as well as the ARDMS specialty board exams. Some people who are underneath the ARRT accreditation, they have to work, I believe, for a year experience and then be able to sit for their ARDMS board exams. Don't quote me on that, but I do know with ARRT, it usually takes a little bit longer for them to become registered so if any of you guys did do the ARRT route please comment down below or anyone who has more information and just wants to share their experience with non-accredited versus accredited schools comment down below so we all can hear what your experience was like and you can potentially help further students in the future and for them to make decisions for themselves Everyone's experience is different, so I want you guys to know that you need to figure out the questions that you need to ask, especially to the program directors, and I just want you guys to see that the ARDMS.org has everything here for you written out. So I'm looking at the abdomen registry website, and if I click on it, it's all the same thing, all the requirements 
have the same PDF. And this is definitely going to help you guys when it comes to choosing what board exam you're going to take and what you need to apply to take these board exams. So I'm going to look at also the fetal echocardiography prereqs and it's all the same exact PDF. So I just wanted you guys to see that every single one of them, it's pretty much the same PDF. You just have to make sure you hold on to this PDF, download it, save it, make sure you understand it, and it shows you how to choose your prerequisite in order to be eligible to take your board exams. So I'm going to click on pediatric sonography and this is the exam that I took last year and I showed you guys how I applied to it. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I do have a video that shows how I applied to take that exam. And this just shows you that some of the exams have different windows of taking the exams. So make sure you check the respective exam that you're going to take and see if there is a window and check out the statistics check out how to prepare this website offers so many things for you to prepare for your board exams and for you to be ready to take these board exams you can see that there's so much here on the website you can find whatever you need you can even check out your CMEs on here, how to renew your credentials. And I also get the question if you have to retake your exams. You don't have to retake your exams, but you do have to pay a fee every year to make sure that your credentials are active each year. I absolutely love this website because it even has all of the content outlines for each of the board exams and you can find them here. It tells you what you can expect is on the exam and how much of a percentage of that is on the exam. There's even study materials, tips, and practice tests on this website. So definitely check it out and go ahead and just look around the website, see what there is to offer because there's so many things that I didn't even know back in the day when I was first taking my exams were on here. And so this is going to be a really big help for you when you are getting ready to take your board exams. I hope you guys found this helpful. This is just a little video that shows you how you can apply and be prepared to take your board exams. Remember that your SPI is usually the first exam that you take while you're in school or after you graduate. And then your follow-up exam will be your specialty board exam, whether it be abdomen, OBGYN, breast, fetal echo, adult echo, musculoskeletal, pediatric, pediatric sonography, or pediatric echo, and vascular. So all of this information is here out in the open for you guys to go ahead and take a look at. Make sure before you choose your school, you talk to them about SPI. And you can even ask them about CCI or ARRT, which are two other credentialing bodies. But ARDMS is the one that is most well known and the one that I am familiar with because that's the route I have taken. And so if you guys have any questions, please reach out to ARDMS. You have this phone number here that you can call. And you can also comment down below if you have any other specific questions. And hopefully I can answer them or somebody else who's watching and knows more can answer them for you. So if there's anything I didn't cover or I missed, please go ahead and comment down below. Please don't forget to like the video. And I hope you guys 
have a great day good luck with your studying and know that you can do it don't give up and we'll see you next time bye